Okay, so here we go. How to refocus on that book and get it done this time. Okay, so there's a book that came out several years ago. Very, very, very popular, very successful book. It was by Stephen Covey. Covey Stephen Covey. And of course, everybody knows it. It was called the seven highly effect, the seven, the seven habits of highly effective people. The seven habits of highly effective people. <clears throat> In fact, back when it came out, I guess it was probably the 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 90s. I had my staff at Gospel Today magazine to sit down, and it was part of their work week to read this book. And then to come back and we would talk about it because I found that there were so many habits that we needed to change, pick up, lose, all that. And um, I kind of wanted to bring that back up to you today. Um, how are you managing your time? Uh, Stephen Covey had this time management matrix that he introduced to the world. And it was it helped us to prioritize things. Okay, so he advocated the use of four quadrants to help us determine what we do, okay, and what we set as our priorities. And there are things in his quadrants were important and not urgent. So there are things that are important, but not urgent. And then there, there are things that are urgent, but not important. Then there are things that are urgent and important. And finally, there are things that are not important and not urgent. Okay, so <clears throat> you have to analyze your behavior to see what you're doing and, and how you're prioritizing your time and how you're spending or investing your time. So there's a new book that came out very recently, and um, the, the last name of the author is McChesney. The book is called The Four Disciplines of Execution. The Four Disciplines of Execu Execution. And the, um, the basic philosophy of this book is that there's a whirlwind in life. There is a whirlwind in life. And many people get caught up in the whirlwind. The whirlwind it consists of your meetings, your daily activities, um, juggling phone calls, emails, text messages, um, things that you have to do, goals, deadlines that you have to meet. And a lot of us who have deadlines and who work on projects are caught up in the whirlwind of trying to get things done, which is great. And a lot of times, it, if it weren't for the whirlwind, you wouldn't have any structure to your life. And of course, you have to have things that are going on on a regular basis. But when you're caught up in the whirlwind of all these things that you're doing, a lot of times it results in very little time for spent pro really making progress, very little time really dealing with the creative side of you, things that are inside you that you know you're supposed to do because it's part of your purpose, but you're so busy caught up in all the stuff that you're doing and all of the daily stuff that you don't really get a, uh, a chance for the creativity to come out. The third thing it results in is very little real change. Okay, so you can go from year to year. Sometimes it's five years later and the things that you said you were going to do, wanted to do, had a vision to do, had a dream to do, you still haven't done. Let's talk about that as it relates to your book. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You've been talking about it, dreaming about it. Uh, you might have even started on it, but you haven't finished it. Because why? The whirlwind has got you. <clears throat> and you're caught up in the whirlwind. Oh, I need some water. Did I bring any? I didn't bring any. Okay, I'll get some later. I'm going to make it through this. So the whirlwind of life, all the stuff that you're doing, all the stuff that takes up your day, the answer to changing that is not allowing the whirlwind to uh, occupy 100% of your life. Most of us have a whirlwind called life that we have to be involved in. So if you can limit that whirlwind, that activity, that busyness, all of that to at least less than 80% and use that other 20% very productively, you will accomplish much more of what you want. You will be more, much more satisfied in life. You will be much more creative and you will be more productive. OK, so I've got some some strategies for you to be more productive and 
of course, this leads to getting your book done. Okay. So the first strategy is focus. Focus on what's truly important in your life. What are your goals that are really, really important to you? Is getting a book done one of them? Okay. Focus on what's really important. Okay. So most of the stuff that you do day to day is urgent, but not necessarily is it important. For, for uh, If you want high level change, you're going to have to limit all of the activities that keep you busy, but don't keep you product productive, okay? Because activity can stifle your creativity, okay? So the answer is for you to focus on what's truly important. Now, according to this writer, McChesney, he says it's important for you to be specific because if you're not specific, and I call it in my coaching, I say you have to be detail oriented. Okay, so you can't just make a goal, I'm going to write a book. You have to have a structure. You have to have some kind of mechanism that tells you how to move from step to step. What is your outline for your book? If you don't have one, I promise you it's going to be much more difficult to get it done. If you don't have a guidebook to tell you what you're going to write, when you're going to write it, and even in, uh, the, the times that you're going to write, then you're not going to finish your book in, in an efficient time frame. Uh, many of you who have signed up for my uh, free information on my website, TeresaHairston.com, you've received a free book calculator. That calculator says, okay, how many words are you going to write? And how much time are you going to spend writing every day? And then at the at, at, on the bottom of the calculator, it will tell you, depending on what date you started writing, what date you will finish your book. Okay? You got to, you, it's up to you. You've got to be committed to what's important in your life. So the first thing is set a goal. So if your goal is to finish your book by June or by the fall, set a date, not just okay, by the end of this year, what is your date? And then how are you going to reach that date? That means every day I'm going to write for an hour or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And it's so important if this is important to you that you do it. So, okay, the, the first thing you do is set a goal. The second thing you do is hold yourself accountable to that goal. Okay. The third thing is focus on how your right now can change your tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's good. Focus on your right now and how that can change your tomorrow. Too many times we are caught up in our past. And a lot of times we think about the past and we let the past behavior, the past challenges, the past stuff that we didn't do, the past habits that, that weren't good, the past relationships that weren't positive invade our minds and invade our minds to such a, to, to the point where it stifles us from being able to move forward. Okay, it's gone. Let it go. Let the past go. Okay, let your right now shape your tomorrow. Okay, so what are you doing right now? What goals are you setting right now that are going to change the outcome of what you're able to achieve tomorrow? That's what you need to focus on. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, focus on the bigness of God. Focus on the big picture. And, you know, I, I said like this, go big or stay home. OK, you know, if you serve a God who is the God of the universe, the God that is international, the God that is global, don't reduce a God idea to a good idea. Let me say that again. Don't reduce a God idea to a good idea. What does that mean? That means that I will not let my circumstances dictate my vision. Okay? That means I walk by faith and not by sight. It means that whatever he put in my spirit to do, when he commissioned it, he gave me permission and authority to walk in that and to be successful in it. When he gives me something to do, when God gives me something to do, 
he's greater and he's more uh, powerful than any situation that I face, than any past that I've had, than any challenges and any obstacles that I'm dealing with. Okay, so that book inside you, that's a concept. It's in your heart and it's it's got to be your passion because if it's your passion and God put it there, oh my God, listen, you're going to be able to put it out and it's going to, I like that lady, Summer, increase your expectations. Yes, I anticipate that God is going to do something through me that's going to be so powerful that when it reaches the person that is destined to help, their lives will be turned around. So that's why I can't stop writing. That's why I can't stop ministering and doing what he told me to do. Okay? So focus on the bigness and the greatness of God. And when he gives you something to do, if he gave you that idea for that book, I promise you, it's your responsibility to do it. Okay, number five, focus on productivity and not activity. The best way to 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 uh, not deal with the whirlwind and not get caught up in the whirlwind of daily activities is to focus on the things that are really producing change, the things that are really growth oriented. And you have to take an analysis and take inventory of your own life. What are you doing? How are you spending your time? You've got to be accountable. OK, and uh, hi. Uh, let's see. Who is that? David. Hey, David. Okay. Okay. So you saying, okay, I'm getting back to my subject, but he's saying his, uh, you keep having to reread your chapters because of time gaps, <laughs> writing to finish. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens because your stream of thought and your stream of consciousness has been interrupted by the time it's taking you to get back on track. So that's why you need to start and finish, go all the way through. OK, so how are you spending your time, even in your leisure time? Most of us will spend at least a half hour to an hour a night watching TV. Really? What's that doing for you? OK, sometime I turn the TV off and I say, you know what? I don't think they're going to miss me. Yeah. Right. OK. Yeah, there are shows that I like to watch, but I promise you, if I'm doing something and I'm focused on it, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing that's going to produce and and, pro and, and be um, prosperous in my life and growth oriented in my life to watch the people who are making th hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions doing what they're doing. That's why they there is called television. They're telling you their vision. OK, now it's time for you to tell the world your vision. Hello, somebody. OK, that's good stuff. OK, so now let's re let's uh, reanalyze. Let's analyze our investment of time. OK, some stuff that we're doing is not important and it's not urgent. What are you going to do to change that? So here's my suggestion. Here's my counsel to you. Here's my coaching for you. If you analyze that you look at your, your daily activities and you say, what, you, you know, well, I have at least an hour a day that I can invest in writing my book. If, if there's an hour a day that you can focus for writing your book, okay, then I want you to write down when that hour takes place. Okay, even if it's 30 minutes, write down when that 30 minutes take place. Okay, identify that. And then make a covenant with yourself to begin to take that 30 minutes or that hour or whatever the time frame is and reinvest that and reconfigure that time for you to sit down and plan to write. OK, that will absolutely impact your goal of writing your book. Now, here's the second part of that. OK, the first part is find that time. OK, then identify where you, what you're going to do. You're going to sit down and write for however long that time frame is that you can invest in writing. OK, every day, even if it's just five days a week. OK, then maybe on the weekends, maybe you can carve out some extra time. OK, then the, the, the third thing is, OK, hold yourself accountable. The fourth thing is that what you're going to do is do this for 21 days. OK, if you will make an, a habit of this for 21 days, it takes 21 days to start a new habit. OK, so for 21 days, I want you to make a promise to yourself 
that if you're on this scope, if you're on this Facebook, it is not by happenstance or circumstance and you have a book inside you, I believe that I'm here to speak to you. And it's time for you to invest that time, invest those 21 days and make a difference in your life that's going to impact the globe, impact millions of people. Yeah, that book inside you is not just for you. Okay, so it's time for you to make some changes. Okay, uh, all right. So it's time for a new level, new level of productivity, new level of growth, new level of creativity, new level of uh, working out all those things that are inside you. Yes. Okay. Do I have any questions, any comments? Is this helping anybody? Give me some hearts if you're feeling it. Okay. Is your book important? Is it urgent? I talked to some people today about their writing projects and you know what, when it really is on you to do, then it becomes important and urgent and you got to do some stuff to make it happen. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the responses. Thank you. Yes. Great stuff. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Do you guys have any questions? I appreciate you sharing the video, Carl. Yeah. Hey, Renair. David, you said this is for you. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, I, people, I need you to take action. Okay. And again, I'm doing webinars and helping people to get their, their writing dreams into reality. And, uh, and you say, I wish people understood our commitment to writing. Yes. You know, it's so important. Um, especially in this season, in this culture that we live in where, you know, so many of our kids are growing up and they're not literate. They can't really read and write. And, you know, it's really, really getting bad. And some of you that have a passion for writing, you need to really do it. Any other comments? Okay, so let me finish. Um, TeresaHairston.com. You can go there. You can check out the, um, the webinars that I've got. I've got some coming up. And I'm going to be introducing something uh, new in the next couple of weeks that I think is going to really bless you right now. Um, it's, it's on the site, but I haven't assigned a date to it. And the webinar that I'm going to be doing is called Help. I've got a book in my heart and I want to get it out. OK, and I'm going to be helping you get that book done no matter what stage you're in. If you're uh, at stage zero and you have yet to put the first foot in front of the other or the first word on the page. I'm going to help you do that. If you've already been writing and it's time for you to get it uh, done, uh, that's, that's what I'm here for too. When should you engage an editor? Okay, so good question. When should you engage an editor? Well, you should engage an editor when you have your, your manuscript about two thirds of the way done. OK, that's when you should engage an editor because uh, an editor is going to help you shape the flow of your content and make sure that the, the chapters that you're writing um, have a consistency across them that is done in such a way that the, the um, stuff that you're writing is actually going to, to impact and be compelling for people to read. Um, so an editor helps to shape what you've already written. Now the the editor is not going to comment on your content per se. Okay? So they don't tell you what to write. They just tell you how what you've written you've written uh should, you know, have a better flow. Okay? So yes, good good question. Any other questions? Okay. Well I'm gonna be on this week um doing some really, really helpful things, I think, uh, to, to get you down the road with your writing. What I'm finding is that a lot of you guys are still in the formative stages and you need structure. You need to, to have, you know, kind of a grid to go by. And if you that's you, that's fine. And, um, you know, it's nothing wrong with not knowing, but the, the challenge is if you don't get some help, you got to get some help. So take the webinar that I'm offering right now. You can still get in on it. It's how to become a published author in six weeks. It's only $150. That's um, a really great introductory price. I'm seeing the same things that I'm teaching for more than twice 
the amount. But I'm so passionate about our community and about getting us writing that I'm really trying to do, th do things that are going to help you. Okay? So, all right. Thank you guys for uh, chiming in. And tomorrow, I'll be back on around the same time. Looking forward to talking with you and hearing from you. All right. Go to my website and uh, check it out. TeresaHarriston.com. Have a blessed day. Okay.